During the Beijing Winter Olympics, China became obsessed with the stories of two women. Their situations are worlds apart. One seems to be floating in heaven, the other suffering in hell. You may have guessed who the first woman is. It's American-born Eileen Gu, whose good luck, athletic success, and patriotic correctness lifted her to stardom and brought her tens of millions of dollars. The woman in hell is a sex slave who was abducted, chained, and abused for decades in a village in Xuzhou. It's the identity of these two women that's the focus of intense public attention in China. Eileen Gu's nationality is out in the open, whereas the identity of the chained woman is the truth people are pursuing. Stars like Eileen Gu come and go, but Chinese people are more concerned about how the chained woman story will evolve. Because every decent Chinese is worried about the future safety of their sister, girlfriend, daughter, and granddaughter. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my show. I'm Lei. The sex slave story broke around January the 28th. A social media video showed a man by the name of Dong in Feng County of Xuzhou talking about his eight children and mentally deranged wife who was chained on her neck. People wanted to know who this woman is and whether she had been abducted. The county government denied it and said she is a local. People then found out that she doesn't have a local accent, and instead has a Sichuan accent. They then found that she looked remarkably similar to a 12-year-old Sichuan girl Li Ying, who went missing 26 years ago. This prompted the local government to issue their first official statement. Saying the woman was lawfully married to Dong, and wasn't abducted. Chinese netizens weren't convinced. They kept pushing for more information. In their fourth statement, the local government finally admitted that the woman had been abducted, but from Yunnan Province. Chinese netizens still weren't satisfied. Some went to Yunnan to investigate and found that the woman wasn't who the government claimed she was. Under pressure, the local government then produced a marriage certificate of the woman and Dong, but the picture on the certificate doesn't look like the chained woman. The certificate doesn't have a serial number, and was dated August the second, nineteen ninety-eight, which is a Sunday when government offices are closed. In the span of three weeks, the local government's effort to conceal the identity of the chained woman. Turned Chinese people's attitude from curiosity to outcry, and now anger. So, who is this woman, and why did the county government try so hard to cover up her story? Wang Shengqiang, the executive producer of Celebrity Interviews on China.com, posted on Weibo, a Twitter-like social media platform, that he is from the same region as this woman, and locals there say she is indeed Li Ying. Twenty-four years ago, a villager bought her when she was fourteen, and she became the sex slave of this man and his two sons. One of the sons is the man in the video who claims to be her husband. According to Wang's post, Li Ying was very defiant and fought her attackers. To punish her, the men stripped her and chained her in the village entrance for any man to violate her. When she bit on the men who attacked her. They knocked out her teeth. When she screamed, they cut off the tip of her tongue. In the end, Li Ying went crazy. Over the twenty-four years, she gave birth to eight children. The man in the video claimed he didn't care who the fathers really are; all the kids would have to call him dad. Wang said he has recordings from the local people to prove that the story is true. Later, he received phone calls from authorities. And his posts were removed. According to Wang, the local government in Xuzhou wouldn't release Li Ying's true identity because it would open a big can of worms. Human trafficking is a major industry in Xuzhou. Li Ying's father was a veteran. This would be bad publicity for the CCP and would affect the morale of Chinese servicemen. Li Ying's father passed away from extreme anxiety after losing his only daughter. Because of the male-female birth rate disparity caused by the CCP's decades of single-child policy, in addition to gender-selective abortions and young women in poor rural regions going to the cities to make a better life, many men in the poor countryside cannot find a wife. 
human trafficking thus became a thriving business. In discussing the problem, mainland Chinese writer Jia Pinghua said in an interview with Beijing News in April 2016, It's wrong from a legal point of view, but if he doesn't buy a wife, he'll never have one. If this village never buys women, this village will perish. Back in 2017, the U.S. State Department listed China as one of the worst countries for human trafficking. According to the White Paper on China's Lost People 2020, jointly released by the Institute of Social Assistance and the People Search Project, 2,739 people went missing in China every day in 2020. That's one million people missing for the year. The book, A Chronicle of the National Women's Trafficking, published by Zhejiang Literature and Arts Publishing House, details that 48,000 women were trafficked in just six counties in Xuzhou in the three years from 1986 to 1989, and the age range is from 13 to 60 years old. According to the book, marriages involving abducted women in some rural villages accounted for between one-third to two-thirds of total marriages. If the abducted women are defiant and try to run away, they are tortured and publicly humiliated. The entire village acts together to stop these women from running away because that's the only way the village can thrive. Some women committed suicide and some were tortured to death. Xuzhou is the center of human trafficking in China. The book also mentions that in the 1990s, half of the cab drivers in Xuzhou city were involved in the abduction and sale of women. Whenever they picked up single women from the train station, they would turn them over to human traffickers and sell them. The situation was so bad that the CCP banned news coverage, but the locals were all aware of it. In addition, Chinese criminal law is very lenient on abduction. Abductors are only given 5 to 10 year prison terms, and a person buys an abducted woman or child is only given a three-year term. However, if you buy a panda, you go to jail for 10 years, and if you buy six parrots, you'll be jailed for five years. Chinese netizens are feeling bitter that a woman in China is worth less than a panda or six parrots. If you buy a woman and don't abuse her and let her visit her home, you won't even be charged at all. Not just Chinese women, women from Vietnam and Myanmar have also been abducted to China. I've seen internet discussions about people seeing mixed children in a poor rural Chinese village. Someone claims that a local man abducted a Western woman who was traveling alone. I have no way of verifying these claims, but as a general precaution, women shouldn't travel alone in China, especially in rural areas. Some Chinese netizens who organized a visit to Xuzhou to investigate have been blocked and some were detained. Public anger against the local government has turned into a grassroots movement. A few days ago, 100 students from Beijing University initiated a petition calling for a thorough investigation of the case and human trafficking in China. So far, students from at least six universities have followed the petition authorities removed all their posts. But this didn't stop people from continually speaking out. Many Chinese citizens have made videos and selfies to protest online. Over 100 artists joined a Break the Chain initiative to use art to raise awareness of the case. In New York City's Times Square, Chinese students overcame fear and organized a public protest. Mr. Kong, the organizers said, Every man has his woman, his mother. As a Chinese, especially a Chinese man, I feel the responsibility to come forward and express my concern and anger against the Xuzhou local government. Xuzhou is one of the strongholds of the Jiang Zemin faction, and the Liying abduction happened during Jiang's time as China's president and the head of the CCP. Some political analysts believe that she is waiting for the Olympics to be over before he does something about it. But I've also have heard that the Central Commission of Discipline and Action have already arrested some local officials in Xuzhou. I hope people can see that the communist system is not sustainable. The conduct of those men in the village is atrocious.
the CCP's single-child policy and forced abortions are at the root of the evil. If Xi Jinping doesn't get rid of the CCP, he won't be able to root out the problems. If Ailin Gu really cares about China and the Chinese people, she should use her influence to do something or say something to help the poor woman. Well, Netizen said it very well. We don't care about who has a gold medal around their neck, but we want the chain on this woman's neck to be removed. Eileen, do something. That's all for today. Please help share this video, and I thank you.